Greetings fellow cultists, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of a new series covering Worshippers of Cthulhu. If you would like to skip the game's overview, some disclaimers, and also the details about this series, please use YouTube chapters and that information can be found in the description of this video as well. Welcome everybody to a stream of Worshippers of Cthulhu. Worshippers of Cthulhu is a city builder game where you lead a cult towards awakening the slumbering god Cthulhu. You colonize and conquer new islands and secure strategic resources, build up your defenses, and summon horrors to defend your people from the enemies of the cult. The gameplay is very similar to like Anno, you know, pick like Anno 1800, some, uh, something like that but a very sinister and horrific spin to it. It's also maybe worth mentioning that this game is less family friendly than most of the games I play. Um, namely for like one or two particular game mechanics, which are a bit gory. I'll be playing through the game's tutorial and then the first chapter of the campaign on normal difficulty. It's gonna be a mix of let's play and tutorial so this is the introductory chapter. It's also worth noting that the game in its current state is missing a lot of the campaigns. As you can see, mousing over them, a lot of them just say coming soon. So there isn't a full campaign in its early access state. It might be worth mentioning. I will say there's probably 10 to 15 hours of gameplay, depending on how much you want to replay and micromanage. I am not a harbinger of destruction. I am but a herald of cosmic rebirth. Our purpose is not to sow chaos, but to embrace the inevitable evolution that awaits us all. Humanity is insignificant, pitiful in its smallness. Our existence is a fleeting whisper in the cosmic winds. And only by awakening Cthulhu can we transcend our feeble existence. In one profound act, we can shake the foundations of the universe. Let us awaken Cthulhu, for in his awakening lies the catalyst for a cascading effect that will reshape the cosmos and a new order shall emerge. The path ahead is treacherous, fraught with challenges, yet it is the only path worth treading. Let us forge a destiny that transcends the mundane. Never wavering, my belly. Your guidance has proven prophetic. The structure before us, etched with our Lord's symbols, emerged as if unveiled at our approach. A certain sign of our fated arrival to this prophesied land. We've reached the edge of his holy realm, Rael. Deconstructing Objects To deconstruct an object, select it, and your people will begin the salvage process. Your people can only salvage one object at a time. High Priest, we may scavenge the fundamental provisions required for our settlement from the remnants of our ship's shattered hull. Your steadfast acolyte shall heed your command, toiling tirelessly at your behest. To build a building, select it in the bottom building menu, picking from the chosen category. Building requires materials to be spent and a builder shack in its vicinity to be constructed. To rotate a building, use Q and E. To demolish, use Q and select the demolish tool. Our resources are dwindling, High Priest. Perhaps it's time your followers have proven their worth by constructing a lumberjack and lumber mill to secure our survival. All right, construct one lumberjack and one lumber mill. So lumberjacks need to be around trees 
and the green sphere of influence is an area that you should not build in or it will uh, interfere with their trees. The building you see here is the stockpile. So it's ideal to build the lumberjack near the stockpile so that they can deliver to the stockpile quickly, but uh, not crowd the lumberjack with other buildings around it. So I'm gonna stick it here. The lumber mill, on the other hand, is where you process the materials that you, you know, it, you cut essentially the timber into planks. Um, and that should be built probably near the main storage so that the travel time of goods is as short as possible. And I'm going to place the lumber mill here once this building is salvaged. Builder's Shack. The Builder's Shack provides the builder's team that will travel via roads and construct your structures. Each builder team is capable of building one building at a time. So if you go into the core tab over here, there is a Builder's Shack. And the Builder's Shack is required to build everything and anything. Uh, I will stick the Builder's Shack here. And then run... Once that's built, race, but it will be a true trial of your followers' capabilities to see if they can deliver on our expectations. I'm gonna raise the game volume up a little bit. I'm a little under the weather, so I didn't want to have to talk over it, but it's a little soft. So next, connect the structures via roads to finish the building. So the the lumberjack needs to connect to everything else. I am going to salvage this building prior uh, because I want straight roads. There we go. And now both the lumberjack and lumber mill will be connected to one another. And the builder team can be seen here heading out to build the structures. Workers. The top UI shows the number of homeless who are not able to work. Right here, it says six. Turn to turn homeless followers into workers, provide them with housing. High priest, the erection of houses is necessary, for homeless followers will not perform any work. So build three houses for cultists. I'm actually going to build six because the tutorial only tells you to build three, but I have six homeless followers. But before I do that, I got to get a little bit into theory. So in the intro, I did say that this game was a lot like Anno. And in being like Anno, there are a lot of services that houses need to be in close proximity to to gain the benefit of that proximity. Meaning you ought to build in such a way that you cluster your houses together. So I will do just that. I'm going to have a main road up here. And I'm going to build houses. Six of them. At the end of this main road. So what I'm trying to do is plan for um, sort of the general design of a of um, a working town with the advanced knowledge that I have, but it doesn't spoil anything. Essentially, plan for you to have small, tightly knit city districts, much like you do in, you know, Tropico or Anno or Settlers or games like that. And in a moment, we'll see the builder team. Here they are. We obey. And they're coming deployed out to build these houses. Also, I am salvaging all the ruins on the island uh, because they are yielding planks and because you can only do one at a time, I might as well just keep clicking on them every time they finish. So once people move into the houses, one of your uh, homeless will move in. And they have their own needs and specializations, which we'll get into in a minute. Workforce. To assign an employee 
select the plus icon in the building's UI and select an unemployed follower. Each employee can be assigned to only one workplace. Production buildings will either generate items from the environment, like the woodcutter getting logs, or turn one material into another, like the lumber mill turning logs into planks. The performance indicates how fast the material is produced. To see what influences the production time, see uh, the factor sel selection of the UI. Now that shelter is secure, your disciples stand prepared for labor, High Priest. Select your devoted followers and initiate the ceaseless work to advance our we cause. We require workers. All right. So here we go. Uh, we have a selection of four different citizens in order to become uh, lumberjacks. And I am going to select this one. Just at random. And then for the lumber mill, I will select this one. There we go. High Priest, the production of plants remains sluggish. Disassemble the remnants of those who came before us and claim their resources. Their family may yet enrich the soil upon which our cult our will thrive. For our God. So now we have everyone currently housed, and I can see the specializations of the others. None of the citizens we have in Dream Shroud have a uh, tree cutting or lumber mill, like lumberjack or lumber mill specializations. So it doesn't really matter um, I... who I put in there specifically as they don't necessarily benefit. We but will. if you mouse over their speed, you can see that the building influences production time and it's calculated based upon the zeal of its followers and other factors. So the other factors is how many trees are nearby. So my lumberjack has a bunch of trees nearby, and then also the island effect. So this specific island, Dream Shroud, has a bonus to planks, wood, cow farms, and stake. And then the biggest factor is the worker's zeal, and the worker's zeal is really low right now because I am not providing really anything to the workers. I'm not providing corn or clams or robes or elders' temples or a re-educator. So as a result, they're, um, conviction or morale or you know, whatever you want to call it, zeal in this case, is really low, meaning they're really slow. My high priest, there is a matter that needs your attention and judgment. Show them the might of our God. Make them fear and feel the ecstasy of life. Fanaticism. The top UI bar shows your current cult fanaticism. You can increase or decrease it by making decisions and taking actions marked with the fanaticism, which is the masks icon. Hover over a specific threshold to see its effects. So we have a choice here. To thank the old one for allowing them to arrive on his land, your people prepare ritual firewood spires. Each spire holds two caught animals struggling against the ropes and a captive brought along during your long voyage. The young man screams with a torn voice, crazed eyes, and deep bruises on his body. You are asked to throw the torch to begin celebrations. The left choice, light the spires in a way that causes a slow and painful burn. The result is plus 10 fanaticism. Or the right choice, Release the sacrifice from the spires. It results in one more citizen and a loss of 10 fanaticism. Okay, you guys want me to burn him at the stake. As the last breath is drawn from the sacrifices and cultist excitement reaches its peak, suddenly something changes. People begin to scream and yell. You see a glimpse of the vision they see. A majestic tendrils of God slithering from the chasm, dripping in blood and gore covering the ground. Where the gore falls, a new material packet is unearthed. The vision fades and your consciousness with it.
High Priest, have your senses been rekindled? At the culmination of the ritual, both of us fell into unconsciousness. Unlocking Buildings Eldritch Favor allows you to settle sacred lands and unlock new buildings. Enter the Eldritch Favor menu by interacting with the icon in the building menu. So that would be this center button down here. And in that state, our God spoke to us through images and visions revealing the sacred truth. A vision of a perfect temple hanging by the edge of the holy abyss. Speak the command, High Priest, and we shall erect this maiden monument bestowed upon us by our Sovereign. Alright, unlock Sacrifice Altar in the Eldritch Favor menu. Spend Eldritch Favor. To unlock the building, select it and spend your Eldritch Favor to unlock the in the Favor window. So, here are all the buildings that you can unlock. Some require specific quests to be completed. Some require you to meet a faith income minimum. In this case, the only thing I can afford is the Sacrifice Altar. And that's what the tutorial wants me to do. Build a Sacrifice Altar for your God. High Priest, it is imperative that the Sacrificial Altar be erected at the designated location, facing the abyss that lies at the heart of this realm. All right, here is the altar. New ritual unlocked, Ritual for Favor. This ritual allows you to obtain favor by carving an effigy and making a sacrifice. Ritual for Favor. As faithful, you can ask for blessings from your god. Among them, ask for Eldritch Favor, needed for construction and unlocking buildings. Receive not your station as a mutual. Demonstrate worth to sacrificial tributes. All right. He will awaken. So the way this works is you click on the sacrifice altar and you hit begin ritual. You add, in this case, planks to build a effigy. And then if you want more favor, you can add additional planks for a bonus. It's important to note that every time you do this specific ritual, it will cost you 1500 faith, but the amount of favor you get varies upon how much you contribute to the effigy. There are other effigies that require more advanced materials, which you will unlock in due time, as you can see. And these advanced effigies are more expensive for faith, but will yield a lot more Eldritch favor by percent. Uh, eventually it does unlock that you can also sacrifice followers, but not in the tutorial. It takes one minute to carve the effigy, and then the ritual will begin. The fire was kindled, my high priest. We must hastily commune with your faithful followers. Encountering the harbinger of God and the living conditions of your flock distort their minds. Pitiful, unenlightened souls. Yet, we should attend to their primal needs to amend this distraction. 
I have carefully recorded the needs of the faithful within their houses, all for your noble purpose. So that was about citizen need. So in order to check what citizens need, we just click on one of the houses. Worship the great one. Faith income. Your people generate more faith and zeal the more you fulfill. In the house UI, you can see your followers' needs. We obey. So I'm going to pause a second. Well, I'll let the storyteller Begin by stating talk. your followers' initial craving. Construct the elder's temple and offer calm. Uh, when he said calm, he means clam. He's just as dyslexic and illiterate as I am. I serve the deep. So if we mouse over this, providing cooked corn will provide both zeal and faith. Providing clam is both zeal and faith. Providing robes is just faith. Providing the temple is just zeal. And providing the re-educator is just faith. So if you have to pick a specific resource, you might want to pick one if you're lacking faith or zeal uh, specific to what you're looking for. But this tutorial wants me to unlock and build the clam collector so that we can start feeding people. In order to do that, I need to complete the ritual so that I have more Eldritch favor to unlock the clam collector. Blessed are we by the magnificent tendrils of our god's liege. But I will have to quell the fear in our faithful, guiding them to all. Let us gather. So we gathered 38 Eldritch Favor. And I would like to do both of those current missions, which is to unlock the Elder's Temple and to build the Clam Collector. So here is the Elder's Temple for 10 Eldritch Favor. And here's the Clam Collector for another 10. The Clam Collector has to be on the beach. No surprise there. So I'm going to create a road down to the beach front and drop the Clam Collector right there. And then the Elder's Temple has a Sphere of Influence as you can see, and it needs to cover the houses. So I'm gonna build it here. Influence building. Oh, this will literally tell you what I just said. Influence buildings such as Elder Temple will influence and fulfill your flock's needs in its range. To see if the building reaches your followers' home, select it and look for the house UI. So here, it will cover uh, those homes, no problem. And does this have an effect? Yes. In supplying the Elder's Temple to these houses, their zeal will go up 50. This game looks a lot like Anno. That's literally what I called it in the uh, About macro. It's like an evil Anno. So, down here, the clan. I'm going to hire these two passionate clam collectors. They'll gain experience increasing their zeal while working in the workplace. Basically, they'll be very happy working as clam collectors. So they'll be happy as clams. Uh, and then the other two people, I'm going to hire another one as a woodcutter and another one as a miller. So that everyone's currently employed. And here is the... Uh, temple. He will awaken. The temple has an upkeep cost of faith. Right now, I'm making negative 80 faith per minute. So if nothing changes, I will eventually run out of faith and lose. Don't worry, that's not something that happens very often. It's just early game. Um, nobody works yet in the Elder Temple. Eventually, you can unlock it so that there are spots for people to work in. But... The green roads here is the range of effect of the temple. So as you can see, it goes all the way down here, all the way up there. 
that's its uh, ultimate sphere of influence. I'm actually going to change its location, though. So, I'm going to put it here. All right. I'll work for our so now, if we take a look at these homes, each one of these homes has Elder's Temple fulfillment, meaning that all of the workers have 50 more zeal than what they had before. So if we take a look at the performance of the Lumberjack, for instance, it used to be slow, now it is fast, and that's because their zeal is a lot higher, their collective zeal. And the zeal of the claim collector will be even higher given time because the workers in there also enjoy being claim collectors, meaning they'll work faster and le start leveling up as well. There should be more ruins for me to break down. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm done with that. There is some debris on the beach, though. There we go. So at this point, I, I have started to provide clam for the followers, which will increase their zeal even more, and also start to increase my faith income. So my faith income is now six up from zero, and it will go all the way up to uh, 36 once clam requirements are fulfilled for all six citizens. High priest, behold how your faith income swells. Your flock's primal desires and cravings have been salted, my high priest, rendering them content and, most significantly, more devoted and productive in service to our sacred cause. Behold, your devoted acolytes stand ready, their zeal renewed, their faith unwavering, and eager to advance our noble pursuit. Your men have spotted a lone boat near our shore. It is in a dreadful condition. If souls are on board, we shall seize them and use their essence to deepen our faith. Okay, interact with the ship to capture its crew. Uh, but as I said, it was going to go up to 36 faith a minute, and that's because we each house be is getting the uh, 20 zeal and 6 faith for their clam fulfillment, and I have two extra clams in my inventory, or my stockpile, I should say, meaning that everybody has their clam fulfillment fulfilled. A singular boat, badly beaten up, miraculously arrived on the shore. Its inhabitants clumsily exited to the shore, falling to their knees and kissing the ground. They talk of dreams that beckon them here. Your priest suggests that you should offer some of them in gratitude to your lord for this gift. The left choice, pick the weakest, in order for the blood to be used in ritual. Welcome the rest of the flock, for their calling just begins. Or the right choice, do not sacrifice any of the arrivals and welcome them to the flock. This is a sign of your god, and it will be useful. Uh, I know my head's slightly away, but the left choice there increases fanaticism, and the right choice does not. And you guys are going left again. Ah, you fanatics. I love it. So, let's talk about the fanaticism bonus uh, right after I read this. Performance window. The performance window displays the status of each production building. You can effortlessly monitor the performance of individual workplaces, allocate additional workers, or promptly access the selected building's UI. So that is over here. So for instance, I have a empty slot in the Clam Collector. Um, so talking about fanaticism, if you mouse over the mask up here, our current fanaticism is 70. In 50 more fanaticism, we will um, level up to the next tier, which is called Awakening. 
where global zeal increases by 1%, horrors swim faster, and followers arrive more in greater number. Then we have devotion, zealotry, and cult madness. These are small bonuses, meaning that if you like the non-fanatic uh, choices, you're welcome to do it. You're not penalized for it. In order to put these uh, hopeless, or ho sorry, ho homeless followers to work, uh, we got to build them some homes. So let's do that now. Eleven houses for eleven people. Fulfilling the people's needs amplifies our faith in Kong. Let us bolster our cult and see it flourish. The cult expands, its tendrils stretching beyond control. High Priest, let us convene in the main storage. I have a proposal for maintaining order. Uh, before I click on the orders within the cult, Honor the teaching. I want to do another ritual. I'm going to sacrifice some planks for more Eldritch favor. It is all the remaining planks I had in my inventory, but it's going to be worth it for more technological unlocks. All right, we're getting those buildings built, and um, let's click on this now. My High Priest, when you first lit this path, we stood on known shores, but with a small flock. Now at the sacred site where our fate solidifies, newcomers speak of dreams drawing them to us, and many more will surely come. We must enforce order and reverence through ceremonies. Please take this knife I found at the abyss's edge. Use it to assert your authority. Do not hesitate. Build the ceremony hall. It's also worth pointing out that for rituals, you can hit auto-complete ritual, which means you will collect the Eldritch Favor once it's done, rather than waiting for you to hit another button. So of the new citizens, let's see if any of them are suitable to be clam collectors. So here are their specializations. As you can see, my clam collectors are level three. Everybody else is level one because they're not working within their specialization. None of them have specializations for clam collecting. So what I will do instead is assign one of them who's a miller. I'm going to go over to the mill here and fire the two current millers and assign the other two that have lumber mill specializations. And then likewise, I'm going to do the same over here in the lumberjack i'm gonna fire the blood drinker blood drainer rather and put in the lumberjack specialization God. all right with the favor that i just earned i'm going to unlock the ceremony hall as that is what the tutorial wants me to do and build that as soon as i have the planks speaking of planks it might not be a bad idea to get another lumberjack going so that I can collect more wood more quickly. I'm going to quickly look to see if there's any more planks to collect, but I think I've exhausted the plank supply freebies that can be found on the starting island. All right, I'm finally in the uh, faith um, positive, meaning I'm making more faith than I require per minute because I'm fulfilling the clam requirements and, uh, yeah, essentially just the clam requirements for everybody. All right, 
I do have enough um, planks for this. So the Ceremony Hall, if you're wondering, does not have a Sphere of Influence bonus for houses. And additionally, it doesn't send anything to the stockpile. So what I'm trying to say is it does not need to be near anything else. You can put it off to the side like I'm doing here. It just needs to be close enough to your builder for them to be able to tra traverse there. But putting it off to the side is not a bad strategy, so it doesn't block uh, more important real estate. I'm also going to go ahead. The tutorial up here says achieve at least 350 faith income. We will be so rewarded. we'll get more faith income from cooked corn and robes. So I want to spin up cooked corn and robes. First thing is cooked corn. So I'm going to build a corn plantation and I'm going to put the corn plantation here. And then I will need to do another... Uh, ritual offering once I have the planks. Coach Garrett, Chief the Dog, Turtle, complete. Blood Let Mask, Island Timber. Thank you for the, the resubs and bits. Lead them toward purity and faith. Lead them toward fanaticism. Okay. Um, gore warning. Warning. The ceremony that I'm about to do is a little gory. It doesn't bother me any, but I have a high tolerance for gore. It might be a little icky for you. Uh, I just want to let you know ahead of time. It's probably the ickiest part of this game. And so yeah, we're going to do a carving. We the obey. way carvings work is it allows we you obey. to change the specializations of your people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the specialization of this lumberjack, Althea Peabody, from being a lumber uh, miller to a clam collector. In order to do that, I go to the ceremony hall and I click begin ceremony. Embrace your destiny. And we're going to do a ceremonial carving. I'm going to find the lumberjack in question, or lumber miller rather, in question. So change, sort it by workplace. Uh, or actually, it was a clam collector, sorry. So there's Althea Peabody and carve her up. So, when you're looking to carve, there's patterns that you have to fulfill. Um, I want her to be a clam collector. So I am looking to place a carving on her back at about this shape and size. Sorry. I know it hurts a little. Finished the carving, and I botched it. Uh, neither of these interpretations are what I was going for. I must have drawn something too different than what it asked for. So I'm just going to have her be a stained glass maker instead. Regardless of the outcome, it increases the fanaticism. A priest, suffering in nobles, mark your people and guide them along the spiritual path in life. Marking the people sets their destined role within the cult. By your hand, your holy mandate is strengthened. All right, uh, plantation. Plantations produce goods from fields, but I need to put fields down first. There we go. There's the cornfields. Work. And working in here will be two people with the corn specialization. As is your people's reverence, pushing them towards fanaticism. Lumberjack problem. People don't know what happens to some of the materials they produce. They're convinced they disappear somewhere, but they're afraid to approach the smelly end of the yard, where strange indentations in the ground can be bar barely be, be seen. Option number one, the left one. Do not fear my faithful. Our God will light our path. Go and see if there are missing materials there. I'll get six planks and lose 10 fanaticism or 
In many tomes I have uncovered, there are mentions of foul creatures that dig, digs deep, and its hunger is endless. Gather materials and cover the hole, which increases fanaticism by five. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Worshippers of Cthulhu, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 22nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow cultists.